The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. Amen.
Welcome everyone, and I just am so thankful that you're joining us today, Church of the Mountain Online. And we're living in some crazy times right now, and just so much going on in the world and so much going on in our nation. Uh, but I have a message for you that I believe will bring some hope and bring some encouragement in the season that we have found ourselves as a church and as people of God. And I just want to encourage you to, at the end of this message, we're going to take communion. And so if you have uh, some juice or some crackers uh, available, uh, please get those. Um, we're going to pray right now and we're going to jump into this. But I just wanted to let you know that we're going to be doing that at the end. Uh, and so, Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for your grace, um, this message. And I pray for your power to flow through this um, this camera, God, and touch people's hearts, touch their spirits, God, touch, touch them in the broken places, God, and the broken areas of their hearts and minds and souls, and touch the broken places of our nation, Lord Jesus. God, we need you more than anything. We love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our mind. We ask for your anointing today in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we're living in a crazy time, and it's a time of division. There's so much um, division and uncertainty. Uh, people are pointing their fingers against each other, and, you know, everything, starting with this virus, it's just been a very interesting and difficult climate, a spiritual climate, uh, and then leading into last week and with this horrible and tragic death of George Floyd, and, and I think we could all agree as Americans, and we can all agree as humanity, that that was disgusting, it was despicable, it was awful to watch. Um, but the thing that I really believe uh, is strong in my heart, that this is not a race issue. This is a sin issue. And there is sin in our nation that has not been dealt with. There is anger in our nation that has not been dealt with. There is hate in our nation that has not been dealt with. And so this is not an, a, a race issue. It is. This is not black against white, and white against black, and us against the police. This, this is, has nothing to do with any of that. This has to be dealt with in the spirit. This is a sin issue. And so I, uh, and really, I've just been very disheartened and very uh, troubled, uh, not by what I see from the world, because I expect certain things from the world, and I expect to see certain things when I watch the news uh, come out of the world. But but what I've seen and what I've seen arise out of certain pastors and certain leaders and certain Christians online, on social media, has been very troubling. Uh, and, and it's just people calling each other out and, and just saying horrible things to other brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, and, and it's just not been right. It, it is not a spirit of the kingdom of God. It is not the spirit of Christ. It is not the spirit of love. And this is not how we are to operate we are together uh, one race. We are together humanity, and we are together the family of God. And I think Paul said this very beautifully in Galatians chapter 3. He said, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. <clears throat> I think Paul tells us, he just kind of flat out tells us right there, you are not this and you are not that. If you have accepted Christ into your heart, you belong to him and we become one family. And so we need to stop the bickering. We need to stop the name calling we need to stop calling people out online and calling our friends out and, and unfollowing people and, and doing all these things. We need to speak the truth in love and we need to remember that we are one family. Amen. We are one family. We cannot bow down to a political spirit. We cannot bow down to a spirit of division. And, and that is what I feel is running rampant so much in our nation right now. It's a spirit of offense spirit of division, and a political spirit. And honestly, you know, these things, when you think about them, you're like, oh, I would never, I would never take the bait of a political spirit. I would, I would never take the bait of offense. I would never take the bait, uh, you know, to, to 
of division, you know, and it's, it's easy to say that, you know, but how many know that the enemy does not walk around with a pitchfork and horns and a tail and says, hey, I'm the devil, I'm here to deceive you, you know, he, he is cunning. The Bible says that he is like a lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible also says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so there are two lions that the Bible clearly talks about. And which one are you going to partner with today? Which one are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the lion that is going to basically eat your lunch and and kill you? Are you going to serve the one that is going to liberate you, give you life forevermore? And so you have the choice. The choice is always yours. It's just like going fishing. You know, you go fishing, and I just use this analogy because it is, it is fishing season. And lots of people are beginning to come up to this area to go fishing. And, but you, you, you throw your, uh, your bait in the water. You throw your hook, your lure, uh, whatever you have, and, and you hope that, that you can deceive that fish thinking that this is their natural food. This is something that they love to eat. And, and, and we are deceiving these fish to, to grab a hold of this, right? And, and so we put these little lures in the water. And it's shiny and it's sparkly. And in the water, it's glistening, right? And the little fish sees this and he says, oh man, that looks, that looks tasty. That looks really good. And it's moving along in the water. And all of a sudden, this This fish jumps up and he grabs a hold of this thing. And he quickly realizes that this is not nutrients. This is not going to sustain him. This is actually going to kill him or hurt really bad. And and so it hooks into his mouth, into his lip, right? And the fisherman gets happy and he he pulls him in if he can, if he's not big enough, if the fish isn't big and and break away. But he, he tries to pull him in. But then sometimes... When you're fishing, sometimes the fish gets so excited, it like lunges at this thing and he will sometimes swallow the whole thing. And this hook and this lure or, or whatever you're fishing with, it goes into the, the, the fish's stomach. And so you have to take some pliers and you have to pull this thing out and it like rips the insides of the fish out and, and they start bleeding internally and they die. And you're saying probably to yourself, why in the world... Are you using such a disgusting analogy? This is what happens. This is exactly what happens in in the body of Christ. This is exactly what happens with the enemy when he is going fishing for believers and he's going fishing in our nation. He he puts out this political spirit. He puts out something on social media. Maybe, Maybe your friend is totally offended and you just start agreeing with that thing and it looks shiny and it looks good. And you latch hold of that thing. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you're not latching a hold of that. It's latching a hold of you. And it's gone down into the innermost parts of your being. And it's ripping you into pieces. This is what happens with the body of Christ. We latch on to other people's offense, other people's anger, uh, political spirits that is causing division. And, and a real spirit of division in our nation. It looks shiny. I think I'll take a bite. I think... I think that person knows what they're talking about. I, I think this guy is, he's legit, so I'm just going to latch on to that. And, but it's not based biblically. And anything that is not based in the word of God is going to lead you astray. No matter how good it sounds, no matter how pretty it is, no matter how charming it is, if it is not based in the word of God, it is going to kill you. And that's what's happening to our nation where, where there's a lot of uh, people that are saying things doing things out of their emotion, out of their feelings. Uh, we're pointing fingers at each other out of our feelings, out of our emotions, pointing fingers out of our, at ourself. People are, are repenting for their skin color. And they're saying, I'm so sorry for the way I was born. And that is a direct slap in the face to Father God. Because the Bible says that every single person, black, red, white, every color, you were made in the image of God. And so when we say, I'm sorry for how I was born, I'm sorry for how I was made, you're saying to God, you don't know how to make me. You, you, you messed up. And you're basically slapping the creator of the universe in the face. And that is wrong. When you come against yourself, you're coming against the Lord because the Lord made you in his image. And he loves the black community. 
And he loves the Latino community. And he loves everybody that is, is white. He loves everybody that's Asian. He loves the world. You know, I was reading Caleb a little book. We know the, the book. <laughs> Red, brown, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. And you're, you're like, yay, I've heard that. But it's the truth. Jesus loves the nations. He loves his children. He loves the entire world. It is not this group against this group. It is all of us together. You see, it is the enemy that wants to put the divide in. It's the enemy that wants to divide the church, divide the nation, and uh, divide all of the people so that we begin to fight and bicker and, uh, and we lose the blessing. And so I want to encourage you, don't take the bait. No matter how shiny it is, no matter how pretty it is, no matter how handsome it is, don't take the bait. It's only going to kill you. Serve the lion of the tribe of Judah because he will liberate you. You know, and I'm reminded of a scripture, a great scripture in Psalm 133. And it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is a great scripture, Psalm 133. This was written by King David during a kind of a crazy season. Um, and he had actually just become king. And so now all of the tribes of Israel were united. And so for the first time, he is experiencing this thing that he's writing about, unity. You see, there was so much national turmoil. There was so much national division. People were uh, so angry at each other, angry at other tribes, angry at other groups. Does it sound familiar? Everybody was angry at each other. So much division in the nation. And then he becomes king over the whole, all the tribes. And for the first time, there's unity. And David begins to pen this and he begins to write this and he says, man, this is, this is good. This is beautiful. This is so good. It reminds me of something that I've read about. It reminds me of something that I've seen. And he begins to talk about what it reminds him of, this unity. He says, it is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. You know, Aaron was a priest. Aaron was Moses' brother. And in Exodus 29, God instructed Moses to set apart this man named Aaron, that Aaron was to consecrate his life, him and his sons, for the work of God. And so this thing of consecration, this is what this is talking about. And so in, in Exodus 29, verse 7, uh, he anoints Aaron's head, pours oil on his head. And it was an act of setting him apart, setting him apart from the crowd, setting him apart from everybody else. He is consecrating his life to the Lord. Isn't this interesting that this is what, what David says, that this is what it reminds him of. His nation's in turmoil. The people of God are in total turmoil, total division. And, and now they come together. There's unity. There's love. There's joy. There's freedom. And he says, this, this is just like when Aaron set himself apart. When the anointing oil was flowing down on Aaron's head and and on his shoulders, this is, this is when he set himself apart from the world's standards, from the world's ways, from the world's thinking. This is what we need to do. We need to set ourselves apart from all the social media garbage, from all the news garbage, from everything that is um, just wounding us, from everything that is just sabotaging our life and our, our families and the family of God. Separate yourself from that. And come back to a good, good father. And another thing too with, with that oil, the oil on the head. It, it was also very common in the Middle East. Uh, as a person came to a new home or came to a friend's home, they would anoint their head with oil or they would put oil on their head. And, and it was a sign of refreshing. It was to bring refreshing to that individual. It was also, it would, it, you know, the fragrance of the oil would smell good. And so on their journey, they had this, this nice fragrance. And, and so this is what uh, we need to do in the body of Christ. We need that refreshing. We need that, that beautiful, uh, fragrant oil that smells good. And that is unity. 
when we come together and when we dwell together in unity, there is this sweet smell that comes out of the body of Christ. And I just want to encourage you in that. God loves unity. He's not coming for a divided bride. He is coming for a unified church, a unified bride. And we need to get our stuff together. So it's running down the garments, on the, the edge of his garments. It's, he says, it's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. This is awesome. It says it's like the dew on Mount Hermon. See, there was, he, he's giving you another sharp contrast. See, Mount Hermon was this place where there was um, all of this dew that was... Uh, because it was high up and it, it created this climate where it was so uh, moist and so it became so lush and it became so green and it was such a co contrast to the rest of the land that was so deserty, dry, dead in the Middle East, right? And so David is, once again, he's saying, this unity that I'm tasting right now, this unity in, amongst my people, it is like the difference between a dead, dry, deserty land and that beautiful, lush, green mountain over there where things are growing, where there's actual vegetation, where there's life. See, this, this is what unity brings. Unity brings life. Unity, uh, there, things are al allowed to grow in, in the context of unity, in the climate of unity. Things really grow and produce good fruit. This is what David is telling us here. So good. And then it, be, it doesn't, and the thing that I love about this, he says, it doesn't stay on Mount Hermon. It's descending upon the mountains of Zion. And so the unity that we begin to experience and that we begin to embrace and get a hold of in the body of Christ, if we can have unity in our body, it will begin to flow wherever you are. If it's us, Church of the Mountain, it'll begin to flow into the Eastern Sierras. If you're in a different community or a different city, you get unity in your family, in your church, and it's going to begin to flow into your communities. This is the plan of God. See, judgment starts in the house of God. Repentance starts in the house of God. And unity has to start in the house of God. We've got to get our house in order. We've got to get our hearts in order. And we've got to come back to Jesus. He is hungry for us and we need to be hungry for him. And the great thing about this, how it ends, it says it is for there that the Lord commanded the blessing. Life forevermore. And I, I don't know about you, but that just really ministers to my heart that, that there is a, a commanded blessing from heaven. You know, we, we talk about blessings, spiritual blessings, and, and oh, oh, be blessed, brother, and be blessed, sister, but, but there's actually a commanded blessing from God when we dwell together in unity. When we dwell together in unity in our homes, when we dwell together in unity as the body of Christ. It says, there I command my blessing, life forevermore. Amen. I just feel this is a word for now with all the division, with everybody listening to this and listening to this, and we're just getting hooked by all these different lures that are leading us astray. And I want to encourage you to come back to the word of God, come back to prayer, and let's come back to a unified bride. Because a unified bride, a unified church that's praying and seeking the heart of God will not be stopped. Amen. We can overcome any obstacle in our nation. We can overcome any obstacle in the church. We can overcome any virus that the enemy throws at us. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. I love you. We, uh, we're so excited for this season. I, I, I just... I don't know about you, but really, all this stuff, all the turmoil, all the trouble, all the craziness in our nation, it only makes me more excited because I know that something great is just around the corner. We, we are fighting something in the spirit right now, and we're going to break through this thing, and we're going to get to a place of victory. Amen? I just want to end with, uh, with taking communion, and so if you have that, you can, uh, you can grab that, but I just feel... It's very important to do this uh, right now in light of everything that's happening in our world. And so we need to remember, we need to remember the broken body of Jesus. 
And we need to remember the poured out blood of Jesus and that it was not just for one nation. It was for the world. That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him (laughs) will not perish but have everlasting life. We need to remember that. He loves humanity. He loves not one nation, but the nations. He loves all of us. And he died for all of us. And we need to come back to that, that truth. And so I would encourage you, take your cracker, take your bread, take whatever you have. Father, we just remember your broken body. And we repent right now, God. We, we repent, Lord, for partnering with a spirit of division. We repent for partnering with a spirit of offense and a spirit of anger. And all these things that we have allowed to come into our hearts and to poison us, we repent. And God, we thank you for your broken body, Lord. Your broken body was enough, Lord. And we just thank you so much for your sacrifice today. And we repent, God. We just repent for our sins and the sins of our nation right now. God, just end all of this trouble. End the chaos in our nation and bring revival, Lord. Bring revival, God. It's only by your blood. It's only by your broken body. So we remember that today. You could take your juice. The blood of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for the blood of Jesus. Well, that your blood was poured out for the sins of humanity. Just the darkest sins that we could ever see or we can think or imagine. The darkest and the most horrendous sins that this world has committed. Lord, your blood has covered every single one of them. And we ask God that we would be reminded of that daily in the nation of America, in the nations of the world. Lord, let every state be reminded of the precious blood of Jesus. God, in Minneapolis, in Dallas, in Atlanta, in all these major cities, God, in California, in Los Angeles, I pray, God, especially, God, in the church, let us remember the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us, is what sanctifies us, is what sets us free, is what saves us, and is what brings us together. Lord, help us to be one in the Spirit. We are one family moving in one accord with one King, and His name is Jesus. And so we bless you, Lord, and we remember the blood. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. I love you so much. And I just encourage you, just uh, just be in prayer. Be in the Word of God and be in prayer over our nation. Our leaders need our prayer right now. Our president needs our prayer right now. Uh, your churches need your prayer right now. Your friends need your prayer. Uh, let's, let's try to cut ourselves off of social media and, and all these news outlets that are only poisoning our hearts. And let's come back to a position and a place of prayer and seeking the face of God. I believe great unity is coming. And we'll have that same testimony that David had where he could taste it. He could see it. He could smell it. He could taste it. And he, and he knew that it was there. So I just bless you today. And uh, we love you so much. Have a wonderful day. Music.